Okay, so now we are going to discuss about blood groups. A German doctor named as Karl Landsteiner. He classified the human blood into four groups. They are A, B, AB and O group. So he has given this grouping based upon the antigen and antibody present in blood. So in our blood we studied that plasma, RBC, WBC and platelets and other substances are found. Along with those substances antigens and antibodies are also found in our blood. On the surface of our RBC red blood cell antigens are present and in the plasma antibodies are present. So antigens are different types A antigen, antigen B. Antibodies are different types antigen A, antibody A, antibody B, antigen A, antibody B. So depending upon the type of antigen present on the RBC, depending upon the type of antibodies present in the plasma, the blood group is decided. Say for example, a group person on his red blood cell antigen A is present in the plasma antibody B is present. In the same way B group if you have taken on the RBC B antigen is present and A antibody is present. So in case of AB both antigens are present antigens are present and no antibodies. AB antigens are present in AB group. In O group no antigens, no antigens, only AB antibodies are present. So these are the variations. On basing these variations they are categorized in that way. So A, B, A, B and O are the different blood groups. So how do we know that which blood is A? What is your blood group? How do you identify? So we go for a blood test to identify the blood group. Doctors, they perform a blood test before they perform an operation, surgery. Because in case of surgery, if there is heavy bleeding, blood loss, the patient, he has to be administered some blood. But he has to be given the same group blood. For example, they are doing a surgery to A group person. If the person has lost blood, he needs blood. Then same A group blood is to be administered to A group person. Otherwise, the blood agglutinates, clumping takes place and leads to death of the person. You see that agglutination or clumping, just you can compare it. If you put some lemon or salt in milk, what happens? So the milk precipitates. In the same way, if we mix different group blood together, their agglutination takes place. Okay, so A group person should be given A group blood. B group should be given B group blood. AB person should be given AB blood. O group person should be given O group. But here, because of no antigens in O group, O group blood can be given to AB can be given to B, can be given to A. So, as the O group blood can be given to A group, B group and AB group, we call the O group persons as universal donor. That means O group blood can be given to A group person, B group person and AB group person. In the same way, A group person can give blood to AB, B group person can give blood to AB. So AB is the universal recipient. If a person is having AB blood group, he can receive or take blood from any group like A or B or O. So he is universal recipient. AB is the universal recipient. 
and O group is the universal donor. If it is the case of A or B, they should take the blood from the B group person should take blood from either B group or O group. The A group person should take blood from A group or O group. So that is the case. So in this way, the blood groups are divided. So how do we find the blood group that is by a lab test? Here we have given the activity using the blood group finding kit which contain the anti serum. If we test our blood sample with anti serum, anti sera, then we can find out to which group it belongs to. We will see that experiment in our practical DVD. So there we can come to know how to find out the blood groups. Okay, so now we are going to discuss about muscle tissue. The main function of muscle tissue is to make movements in our body. So movements are needed in our body. What is the need of a movement in our body? Movements are needed for animals to get their food. So the animal, it wants to go to its food in search of its food. It has to move completely from one place to another place. So it has got legs or hands to move from one place to another place. So the hands and legs, they have muscles which help in the movement by which the animal can move from one place to another place, locomotion. The animal has to eat the food, chew the food with the help of mouth, upper jaw and lower jaw. Here the movement is required to chew the food. So here the muscles in the mouth, they create the movement to chew and engulf the food. And after the food is taken inside, inside the digestive system, movements are required to digest the food. Movements are needed in the stomach and in intestines to make the food get digested and to make the food pass from one part to another part of the digestive system and finally for excretion of the food also movements are required in the intestines. So these movements are caused by the muscles. So in, in our hands and legs, you see that hands and legs, they have muscles which help to move our hands and legs. So that movement takes place by two different processes called as contraction and relaxation of muscles. Contraction and relaxation of muscles. So these are the two different processes by which a movement takes place. So for this contraction and relaxation, the muscles are made up of contractile proteins. So these are the proteins which create contractions, contractile proteins. So different parts of our body, not only the hands and legs, the internal parts like heart, liver, stomach, intestines, lungs, kidneys, all these are made up of muscles. So these muscles, they make the movements, say for example, circulatory system. So in the circulatory system, the heart, it has to pump, contract and relax, contract and relax. So because of the contraction and relaxation, systole and diastole, because of that, the blood is pumped through the blood vessels. Even the blood vessels become narrow and wider, narrow and wider. So this makes a flow of blood. Even if you see the esophagus, in esophagus, there are some movements called as peristaltic movements, which make the food to pass through down into the digestive system. So in every organ, the muscles make movements which helps to function, the, carry out the specific activity that is to be done by the specific organ.